What's going on guys? Indy here with Ultimate Tool Reviews. Now if you've watched my channel in the past, you know I go into a lot about different tool brands, their warranties, repairs, reliability, build quality, and things like that that help you decide which branded tools to buy. Now it's always fun watching other YouTubers that do a lot of you know professional work and they talk about you know how the different brands they use, the different warranty experiences they have. I was watching a YouTuber who's a pretty big YouTuber and he was talking about that he's never going to buy DeWalt power tools again. He just posted the video a couple days ago and it was kind of shocking to me that he was talking about his DeWalt miter saw that had a failed motor. It also had the motor fail again about a year later. He said it cost him around $700 to repair that for two times. I think it was like $350 each time the motor went out. Now that's rather shocking to me because I think that's like a thousand dollar ish miter saw. So to spend almost what it cost to buy a new one to repair that thing twice, but you also gotta count in downtime. You gotta count in whatever your drive time or shipping costs to get that miter saw into a repair center. Uh, that adds up to a lot of money really, really quick. But I wanna talk about what I do to avoid using the warranty, what I do to avoid paying for any repairs, and what I also do to avoid any downtime. So guys, here's my three best tips that I use. Now I will say before I get into these tips, they're not gonna be practical for everybody. They're not gonna be, you know, the best idea for everybody. They're just what I use and it's been working for me ever since. All right, so tip number one is always keep your tools newer. If you know a tool's gonna be getting out of warranty, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to get rid of it, but it might mean that you need to start upgrading your tools. Uh, if you follow my channel, especially things like Dented Tools, there's other tons of channels out there that do a lot of tool deals. It's really, it's really not that hard to find a great deal on a tool that you might need to replace. Um, now, some tools can be harder to find replacements on, things like lawnmowers and miter saws. The bigger stuff doesn't actually have deals that often as a lot of the smaller tools. But of course, it's still worth it to keep looking out for those tools. If you know that, hey, maybe in a year or so, you might, your miter saw may be coming out of warranty, you can start searching for another one now. Now, I'm not saying that when your tool becomes out of warranty, it's now useless, but the warranty does kind of give you a estimated date of when you might start having issues. And that's just how I look at it personally. I've got some tools that are way out of warranty that are still working fine. I don't necessarily you need that tool that much, but for tools that I use just a ton, pretty much heavily every day, I like to make sure that tool stays very new. I'm swapping some of those, some of those tools out every six months actually, uh, because I know that tool is you know vital to making my income. And of course, I wanna have that tool working all the time. Yeah, I could take it in for repair. That's no problem, I could take it in for warranty. But how much time am I losing on that warranty repair? How much money am I losing? So my nearest Makita Milwaukee service center, which they're actually the same place, is actually about a 20, 25 minute drive from me. Um, plus I'm gonna be there for another 20 minutes or so. So round trip looking at about an hour, I'll also do that twice because I gotta drop it off and pick it back up. So my two hours of time there plus gas is can be worth quite a bit for what I can charge on a job. Is that worth it for me to take an impact driver in? Not really actually. It's for me to find a deal on another impact driver, buy that instead of taking one of my impact drivers in for warranty. So that's just how I look at it. That's the way I, how I keep preventing myself from using the warranty. Not that it's bad to use the warranty, but I look at it purely from a cost perspective. Is it for me to go buy a brand new tool and now be able to get an additional two, three, four, five years of life out of that tool rather than taking one that's nearing the end of its warranty period and having to spend a bunch of time taking it in? Well, what am I gonna gain from that? A tool that's still heavily used. All right, tip number two. I like to keep two of certain tools that are very critical to me. So I've got two of these stick vacuums here. I've got two of the single battery, the little mini chainsaws from Makita. And now I have two of the lawnmowers from Makita. Now that's not very practical for everyone, I will say that. But it's quite practical for me because if any one of these tools goes down, I can't sacrifice the time it takes to A, go find the new one, or B, get it repaired. These tools make me quite a lot of money. My wife uses the stick vacuums a lot on her jobs and she cannot have one go down. In fact, on some of the jobs she goes on, she'll actually bring both even though she just needs one because she can't take the time to go maybe grab, come back home and grab the other one or even go to the store and pick up another one. It's cheaper for us to really have two of those tools on hand at all times. 
especially when you can find a deal and just buy two of them right away. So I will say like the two chainsaws down here, they're going for like 200, 250 at Home Depot. I was able to grab both of these on eBay for about a hundred bucks a piece. So for the price of just buying one, I was able to grab two on eBay, got them both brand new in the box. And these tools are very, very useful to me. I get a lot of work out of them. Now for having two lawnmowers, that can be very impractical. Of course, it takes up more space. But for some of my clients, I do a little bit of, you know, clearing some of their spots in their property for them. And of course, that makes me a good amount of money doing that for them. So for me to have one lawnmower go bad, these lawnmowers aren't even in stock at Home Depot anymore. So if I need to grab another one really quick, that would be a huge problem for me. Add to that, I've heard some horror stories about how Makita has you warranty the lawnmowers. They require, it to you, they require you to send them to one of their service centers, not just a authorized service center, which, which would require you to probably to ship these back in a very expensive manner. The nearest one to me is about a three hour drive, which would be totally impractical for me to take one back. I was able to grab one off Facebook with batteries for $200. Now I still have mine, which I bought brand new. So if one does break on me, of course I can swap out parts and have one always ready to go. And now I, need, now I know that I need to buy another one because I have one that's broken. And finally, tip number three is buy some tools that are kind of designed to be disposable. Now that doesn't really make any sense for what I've been saying, but hear me out on this one. This is a Makita XRH01. This is a SDS rotary hammer. Now this tool, I can often find these pretty cheap at pawn shops. I grabbed this one on eBay. I got it for like 60 bucks with the case. Um, came with one battery. I have no idea why it was listed that cheap, but it works just fine. And I do find these often once in a while. Now this tool is gonna run you $250, $300, but I've only gone through one of these in a couple of years. It's not a tool I necessarily use a ton, but it's one of those tools where I can oftentimes find a used working one for really, really cheap. And it does save me money because I don't have to worry about warranting this thing out. If this thing goes bad, I'm tossing this thing out and I'm gonna go find another one that's used for really, really cheap. I figure I'll still be below having a below the price of having a new one within maybe 10 years for how much I actually use this tool. So having tools that can be designed to be just disposable when it goes bad, buying it really, really cheap, especially when they're not a critical tool, but still an expensive tool, can help save you, of course, time with warranting out a new tool. I don't wanna spend the time warranting out a $300 tool and not having it on the job site. Now, of course, that's not gonna be practical for everybody, but for what I do for using this thing, maybe 20 times a year, it's very practical for me, and I've always got other options that I can use other than just having an SDS hammer. So guys, that's my three tips for what I do to avoid wasting time warranting tools, uh, wasting money repairing tools, and wasting money buying brand new tools when I don't really need a brand new tool and nor do I actually want to deal with the warranty if something does go bad on a more expensive tool. So guys, in review, first thing I do is always keep new tools on hand. If it's gonna be a really, really heavy use tool, I try to make sure that by the time it gets to end of life, I'm already working on getting a replacement for that tool, depending on how much I use that tool. The more critical that tool is to me, the faster I'm gonna replace that tool and be looking for deals constantly. My goal for whenever I buy or sell a tool is to always buy that tool as cheap as possible, find the best deal for it, and then when I go to resell it, I can get the most amount of money for it. I'll give you an example. I recently just sold both of my Makita 36 volt, the dual battery LXT chainsaws. Now I paid right around $500 for both of those saws. I didn't pay $500 each, I paid $500 for both the saws. One of them I got with four batteries, the other one I got with two batteries. Now I sold them both on Facebook. I sold them for about 250 bucks or so. That's what I got for both of them. One person bought both of them, which was really cool, but I was able to keep all the batteries and the chargers to them. So for 250 bucks, I got six charger, or sorry, I got six batteries and two chargers. Not a bad deal for using those saws for about two and a half years. And of course those saws, do they have a lot of life left on them? I'm not sure. But I did make it very clear when I sold them that hey, that they were heavily used and they definitely took you know quite a beating, but they still work fine. So I've already replaced them with the new XGT chainsaws. And the cool thing with the XGT, chain, XGT chainsaws right now is they can be had for just a little over $300 in a kit on eBay right now. So I've seen a lot of those going on right now and I figured, hey, this is a great time to sell my Makita 36 volt chainsaws upgrade to XGT, pick up some more batteries, and really not lose a lot of money. I'm only paying 
about a hundred dollars more per saw right now after I already sold my old saws. So kind of a fantastic deal there. My tip number two is if you have a very critical tool that you can't really find, you know, maybe a deal on that often, or you can't ever get a replacement very quick, especially tools that are not kept in stock anywhere locally, I always have two of those tools, of course, when practical. It's not always practical to have two maybe very, very expensive tools, like maybe miter saws are kind of hard to store, but if that's something that you use to make a good amount of money, a good amount of your income, that's maybe definitely worth it for you. For me, I've got, you know, two of the little chainsaws, I've got two of the stick vacs, I've got two lawnmowers. It's just not practical or easy for me to a warranty out those tools, nor is it practical for me to be able to get a replacement tool very quickly. For those tools, I can't wait a couple of days for them to arrive shipping. I have to have them that day to finish that job. I don't want to put that job off because I've got jobs the next day. And finally, the third thing is if you've got a tool that maybe is you know on the pricier side and you don't necessarily need it super heavy like this SDS hammer, I always like to go out and buy a used one for as cheap as possible and just use it till it dies at that point. I've always got other options I can use in place of an SDS hammer and it's a great tool to have that I don't want to pay a lot of money for and if I do pay a lot of money for it, I don't want to worry about the warranty. So having just a cheap version of that tool allows me to kind of just continue on. I can find another cheap version of that tool if I want a secondary backup for it too and I'll be saving a lot of money versus buying new. So guys, remember these tool, these these tips are not going to be practical for everybody. That's just what I do to avoid the headaches of warranty repairs, um, paying out of pocket for repairs, which I don't think is worth it ever. I'm going to pay a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks for repairing a tool that's may say worth four hundred dollars or even more. I'm just going to go buy another version of that tool. I'm going to keep my eyes out for looking for deals as well. I'd rather just have a new tool that I know is going to give me some good amount of life out of it then repair a tool that I don't know the condition of the other components in the tool still. So that's kind of my best three tips guys for avoiding warranties, repairs, and of course downtime in tools. So guys, thanks for watching. Take care, have a great day and stay safe out there.